Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I want to give you guys 10 great tips on how I passed the surveying exam and you really don't need a course. So today I'm going to tell you how exactly to do it. So the surveying exam really wasn't that hard. It was mainly just a race against the clock. There was a lot of sequential calculations and the problems are really what I like to call well-defined, meaning that you can actually just brute force calculate and provided you know what they're looking for and what they're asking uh, you can pretty much find the answer but it's just you have to know exactly what calculations to do so I think that's the hardest part is just the race against the clock okay so the first tip is you have to buy the correct study materials and study the fundamentals and even the greats such as Michael Jordan they always practice the bounce pass they always practice the layups so you must get good at the fundamentals what does that mean for the California survey exam well that means that we are going to go through the resources that let me know the fundamentals for the exam and help pass on the first try and that's what you guys really want to aim for is passing on the first try so uh, the first book that we have here, Surveying Practice Problems by Timothy J. Nelson. And basically I did uh, almost every single problem in this book and it was really helpful. He went over horizontal curves, vertical curves, distance, leveling, area, angles, traverses. The second material that you're going to want to buy, California Civil Surveying Reference Manual by PPI. This one's well written. It's kind of the equivalent of the CERM. You're gonna need it. And basically, it just tells you uh, great problems on law of cosines, taping correction factors, stadia measurements, differential leveling, zenith angle and standard error, traverses, traverses using bearing distance method, traverses using distance distance method, horizontal curves, and vertical curves. And then the last but not least uh, material that you're going to want to need to pass the exam without taking a course is the California Civil Surveying Practice Exam by PPI. And basically there's two tests in this book so you want to use it 10 days right before the exam. Diagnose your areas of weakness. Complete the 255 question practice test in the allotted time, 150 minutes I think. Um, and, it's, and that means 2.7 minutes per question. So that's it. Guys, if you haven't already, smash the like button because it helps with the algorithm and it helps me know that I need to continue to make great content to help you guys out and pass the exam without buying expensive courses and show you exactly what to do. Thanks. The second tip is read all the definitions. I'm gonna provide a link below where you can read all read all about the terms of surveying. Uh, this is really important because it's estimated that it's going to take a month and a half to do all your studying so you want to spend that first couple of weeks just kind of reading the material, going through the chapters and I, I break it down. The PPI book was really great so I'll provide a link below. The third one is set a study schedule. This one is important because for me it took a month and a half and I really didn't do too much intense study like I did for the eight hour exam. But I mean, nonetheless, you do wanna set a study schedule. And for me that was uh, working in nine to five or eight to five. And then after work I would come home and study for maybe an hour and then on the weekends maybe four or five hours. Uh, each day so Saturday and Sunday and my old colleague of mine he used to say proper planning prevents piss poor performance this couldn't be more true I mean you guys just gotta do the studying and just set a, set a time slots in your schedules to st study accordingly and pass on your first try Candidate Bulletin Board, Candidate Information Bulletin Board by BPELS. 
B-P-S-E-L-G. Can't say that. <laughs> uh, so prior to the exam, you want to uh, submit your application to the board, uh, receive the authorization to test. You're gonna wanna schedule an appointment. You can go to prometric.com, provide a link below. Uh, you can reschedule up to 30 days prior to exam. Uh, rescheduling from three to 29 days requ requires paying a $40 fee. So if you plan to reschedule, uh, try to do it a month in advance. Rescheduling less than three days, uh, you need to pay a full examination fee. You don't want to do that. Taking the exam, arrive 30 minutes early, present a uh, government issued ID, driver license works. You can bring a banker's box full of materials. These are basically those kind of moving boxes. Uh, you're allowed a 10 inch by 15 inch by 24 inch deep box. Reference materials must be bound, so no loose papers. They, they might take that away. It has to be in a binder or some sort of other uh, binding material. You can bring any two of the following, a ruler, protractor, architect scale, or engineer scale. I actually didn't bring any of those, but I mean, it could be helpful. I don't see, it couldn't hurt not to bring them. You can bring earplugs. Uh, the testing center will have earplugs as well. Uh, calculator usage, bring two calculators, any handheld calculator without a QWERTY keypad. So this means that TI-84s, TI-89s are allowed. So that is a big, big game changer because in the eight hour you're you are allowed those TI 36X calculators, those rinky dink ones. Not great. So, my suggestion is get good with the TI 84 because it's just going to save you so much time and effort on this exam because you're going to need it. Uh, the pace of this exam to me is much faster. It's only two and a half minutes, uh, sorry, 2.7 minutes per question. Uh, if we break it down because there's 55 questions and you only get uh, an hour and a half, uh, sorry, two and a half hours. Um, so that means that you only have 2.7 minutes per question and this will be a computer based testing exam. So a little bit different than the eight hour where you're allowed a, a scratch paper that you can write on, write on the problem itself and make little notes if they give you diagrams you just have to use the scratch paper um, just it's just a difference you got to kind of get used to that uh, be part of the test please review the BPELSG -E website for any additional changes Okay, my tip number five is get scary good with the calculator. TI-84s and TI-89s are allowed. That is the big game changer. So you definitely want to get good at that. Um, I can show you guys how to do that. Uh, if you click on this website, uh, passcivilpe.com. Six, uh, watch YouTube videos on the way to work. This can help in that kind of first couple of weeks where you're learning the surveying concepts. You definitely want to uh, learn the quickest way possible and what other better way that, than to just Google whatever topic you're studying for that week, uh, be it horizontal curves, be it surveying equipment, uh, whatever it may be, so just YouTube it. Number seven is practice reading the problems quickly. This one is important because you just want to cut to the chase and a lot of times surveying is just asking you to find one thing and it may require one or two calculations in between. And the way they structure the word problems is to me, it's just blah, 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 detail, blah, 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 detail number two, and then find X of Y. So really, you just want to look for that last sentence saying, find X of Y, and then 
go back and plug in detail number one, detail number two, and then you will have your answer. That is kind of the way that I see these problems structured because, I mean, really they need to give you two out of three things to solve the problems. I mean, let me rephrase that. They need to give you all the information they need with one thing missing and then you can solve the problem. And that, that's the way all these problems are really structured. Okay, number eight is think generally how the test maker is going to create these questions and uh, the concepts of surveying are base creating questions around geometric constraints. So like I said, they're just basically giving you um, n minus one amounts of information and you just you just need to find that last piece of information. Uh, they got to give you, I mean, all that you need really. It's just really how do you solve this problem in the most time efficient manner because if you're only given 2.7 minutes a question, that means there's no time to kind of enter hand calculations very slowly. So just keep that in mind. Time is important. Number nine is applied knowledge that you would have learned in the real world. And for me, this kind of means looking at uh, plans of streets and highways. Um, that really helped me kind of understand the surveying aspect of it because really it's just horizontal controls, like how far away is something and then, and then how high on the elevation that point really is. And if you take that kind of approach into how they structure their curb ramps and highways with stations, um, surveying doesn't become that hard of a concept to really learn. Last, number 10 is, um, so 10 days before the exam, take all the practice tests that you can. And I'll provide a link below for the practice exams that I used. Um, there's, this is important because the formatting of the test is a little bit different. So what you want to do is kind of take the practice exam, have two sheets of paper and practice writing down your answers, but not writing in the exam booklet and time yourself. Make sure you're hitting that 2.7 minutes per question mark. Um, because the difference here is that it's computer based. So one person would be on the computer and you'll be clicking through from question to question. Excuse me. Uh, you'll be clicking through question to question, but you can't write on any of the diagrams that they give you. So you just got to practice writing on the scratch paper.